Yo, yo, yo. What's up, YouTube? It's day 12. That's like one and a two together. You know, I don't know why I did that hand sign, but there we go. I guess it's one and two. So, uh, cool. On that note, let's go ahead and get started. In this one, it's uh, basically a graph traversal problem, which honestly is definitely is just not my strong suit. I think there's a much more efficient way to solve this one. If you know of it, link maybe in the comments for it. Um, my way works pretty fast. I don't know if it's just because I got to abuse writing in Rust, and Rust is really fast. I don't know. We'll see, I guess. But either way, basically what happens is you're given this list of things to do. Start A and start B, A to C, and these are basically just nodes and their connections, okay? Uh, and what you do is basically, like, you need to find some way to represent this graph structure, and you want to find the paths from start to end. And in part one, you're basically saying, okay, well... I want to only visit small caves at most once and visit big caves. I can just visit them as many times as I want to visit them. Okay. So that's basically the first thing. It shows some examples of how you could have all these different paths as always. And then uh, we get our answer for which is 3401. So actually my solution works the same for part one and part two. You just change how many times you're allowed to visit these caves. And we'll go over that shortly. I mean, this is kind of spoilers for part two, but whatever. You know how it goes. So what did I do? Basically, I created this new type called node. It says whether it's a big node or not, and it has a name, which is a string, and it has this set of connections. Now, I think there's probably other ways to represent this, but this was a way that at least made sense in my mind how I wanted to do it. So what we do is we read all the lines. We split them on the dash, right? So remember, it basically just looks like this, you know, PJ to HE or something like that. And then for each of these left-right pairs, I just added these nodes to, to my nodes map here. This basically says if we haven't added this node before, insert this, uh, you know, do some stuff to make uh, d the defaults. We probably could have used default and impl default, things like that. Uh, but we just didn't on this one because I was trying to think of ways that we could actually solve the problem. And then we need to connect a node, which pretty much just means, okay, we're going to get the left and the right side, and we're going to add the corresponding connections there. So now we have basically this list of nodes. We have some connections. We can make our own paths through here, okay? Now we create this sightings, which pretty much just has counts of how many uh, different kinds of connections we make. We don't have to remember the connections themselves. We actually just need to remember how many connections we've made, sort of how many sightings. And so then we call this find path function that calls uh, that passes in the things that we've already started. And we always start at start and we end at end and we use that sort of in this path uh, function here. So what happens? We start with sightings.visit start. Uh, so I wrote some impulse sighting. So I wrote some functions here to help me uh, use what sighting can do. And basically what happens is inside of visit here, this is visit for sightings, remember, we're going to say, okay, uh, how many things have we visited so far? Well, it's whatever that is plus one. Uh, if it's not a big node, so this is basically our condition here, and we're checking to make sure that... Uh, Basically, we're allowed to go visit this next spot in a way. Uh, and then we say whether we can have a max uh, for this key. And then we're going to insert, okay, so self max key. We're going to use this optionally string. We're going to use this in can visit. So just, just hold. Hold, I know you don't know what this does yet. That's okay. We're setting it, though, basically to tell the condition of whether we're allowed to backtrack to here or not is more or less what's happening. And then we insert into our counts that we visited this name uh, and this value, okay? So that's, we start off with start every single time. And then after this, we take our start and we go through each connection here and we ask, okay, cool. So we have a path that we've gone on. Here's the path that we've been on. So we're gonna push that connection onto this string. And then we're gonna say, oh, hey, where could we go from here? Where can we go from basically the next connection in the connections that we have in start? Uh, now, what we can say is, okay, if the connection is the last one, sure enough, we'll push the paths. If we can't visit it, then we're going to skip. And then otherwise, uh, we're going to check whether we're going to basically just go inside of here and we're going to append to the paths whatever paths we find calling this country this function recursively. Now, I think you can switch this around to switch this into the same sort of while and visiting pattern that we just did for the last one. I didn't write it this way because this is just the way that I was thinking of how to solve it. And uh, it's still solved really quick. 
So this is for the case with one, and I'll just show you how long it takes to run for the case with two. And I mean, it takes, it's not instant, but it's still very fast. It's still like less than a second. So I didn't find any super big reason to optimize further, just so you know. But if you wanted to try your own way of doing this, I think you could switch this into a stack where you're pushing and popping things off of that stack of places left to visit. And you could avoid the recursive call, which will probably sort of net you a really good performance gain. In this case, I didn't need it, but it probably would have resulted in some in some nice stuff. So, what's the what's the last trick here? The trick that we didn't go over yet. That's this can visit function. So basically, this checks the conditions that were given to us in uh, the directions, which is more or less if you have a big node, which is like if it's all capitals, then you can always visit this. If it's the start node, you can never backtrack to the start. That's not allowed. And then the last thing that we check here is basically saying, okay, have we already sort of checked this if we've already hit our max things for this key in this traversal path, okay? Because each path is going to uh, allow itself to hit a certain max at a, at a different time. And the max count, like I said, for the part one is just one, which means this basically always just returns false when you have encountered this small cave before. But for the second one, it allows you to visit that other cave just one time. So that's sort of what this condition is. You could change this condition to allow for more paths and more options. Uh, but of course the problem didn't specify that. So once we do that, we sort of just go through this loop of all the connections to start and we're appending these paths. Uh, I probably could have done without doing this path because we don't really need it inside of find path. Uh, and so instead of having sort of like this large, um, a bunch of strings getting pushed onto arrays and not, we could just increment the count. Uh, but once again, that's okay. We didn't do that and it still ran fast enough. Ultimately then after we've run through every single one of the connections in sort of our start connection and we've hit the end from every possible scenario, then we've got the count just as we were asked to do in the problem. Hope you enjoyed this one. I, I think one thing to note, just as some stuff that we did that was cool, was don't be afraid for these kind of problems. Just make yourself a little struct with a few little functions that you can keep track of stuff in. Really simplifies the code and allows you to write the logic separately, right? Of worrying about whether we can visit this sighting or not, or whether we can have these nodes and have the connections. And I know in Rust, I know in Rust, you never want to write and like copy strings, but it is okay to copy strings sometimes, okay? If you use other languages, you're copying strings all the time, so don't worry. Don't worry if you have a little bit of memory overhead when you're first solving the problem. You can always go back and change these to string references and add lifetimes and all that kind of stuff. Really don't think you need to do it on your first pass, okay? So that's the whole problem. Read them, add the nodes, connect any nodes that you need, and then basically find the paths and count those up. That's it. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed. If you like the videos, give them a thumbs up. Let me know. Let me know if there's anything I can help you with in Rust and give me a shout. Thanks, everybody. I will see you later.